What was, was the most fun party? You don't got to say that. <laughs> you don't got to say mine. And they know how competitive you are. If they say yours isn't the best party, they're I know, I'd be rattled. Yep. Here we go. Coming down to three, two, and one. Stanley Cup champion, Nathan McKinnon. So almost exactly a year ago today, uh, the three of us were sitting in a room in Chicago, and we were talking about you and we were talking about things that you've done in the game. And I don't know if you stopped us midway, but you wanted to go out of your way to make the point that, hold on, guys, I haven't done anything yet. And you went on and you talked about what Sid's done and the trophies and the cup and all that kind of stuff. How do you feel now? Yeah, I was thinking about that too. Like last year was all about what happened against Vegas. You know, you guys choked and all that stuff. And now it's it's all positive this year. Things have changed. Uh yeah, it feels good. Um, I probably thought I'd feel more satisfied after winning a cup, and I'm just <laughs> people are like people are asking me, "Oh, like are you gonna chill out now, Nate?" And nah. I'm like, "No, nah, I feel the same. I feel the same." Yeah, I gotta tell you that was my that was my number one question was because yeah. I thought the same thing Jeff did. I was wondering would any part of you? I was wondering if you were too driven to be satisfied, and I think you just answered the question. Yeah, I I just think you just want the feeling again. It's it's um it's so special to to win it and you know, I think I'm so proud of our group and what we did and it I guess satisfied isn't the right word. I'm just happy that you know, my every year you're thinking, "Oh, I don't know if I'll ever get one. I'll never get one. I can't retire without getting one." I don't, but you see some legends that nev- have never won it and you feel so lucky to to have won it and it's a, it's an amazing feeling. What was what was the most satisfying thing? Or whether it was in the moment or after or sometime during the summer, what was the most satisfying thing? I think the, just the, you know, losing and bouncing back is is the, is the most satisfying thing. You're just so low. Um, just for instance, the, the game five loss against St. Louis when we blew a three nothing lead. It's the second round demons, you know, around our team. It's a lot going on, and and that's a tough game to lose. Uh, and then we have to go to into St. Louis to to win Game Six, and we and we dominated the game. And I I truly think like it was crazy goals how they how they how they won it. And I'm not like a huge spiritual guy, but it was almost like it was setting us up for Game Six in Tampa, losing Game Five in the finals. It was just a tough day, a uh, heavy day. It was a lot of pressure and Cup was in the building. It was our first time in that situation. So, um, but yeah, I think it kind of set us up. And if we, maybe if we won game five against St. Louis, we wouldn't have had that proper experience, you know, going through that already in that postseason. So, you know, I'm uh, athletes sort of come to this realization later on once their career is done and they, and they look back and that is um, appreciating losing and it makes winning more profound. And there's more of a gravity around winning when you've gone through, you know, as you mentioned, whether it was against Vegas, for example, uh, are you at the point where you can appreciate having lost before winning? Yeah, totally. I totally can. I think you, I think you have to in our situation at least. And me and, Gabe Landis got, we're talking, uh, just looking back and we thought we were ready to win and we had no idea. Like, <laughs> we, we had no clue. Like 17, 18, uh, 18, 19 against Calgary and San Jose. Like we we're like, oh yeah, this is the year. And yeah. It was never that year. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> we were young, you know, we're still a, a pretty young team. Our core is all in our twenties, mid twenties, kills, kills 23, 24. So Got a, got a lot of good years ahead of us still, and um, but yeah, the, all that experience, all that losing, all those uh, hardships, um, how we handled things then versus now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's what life's all about, just growing. So, all right, there is a piece of business we got to deal with here, and that is your future. You're you've got one more year on your contract. Um, there, I've heard that it's possible you could end up as the highest paid player in the league. Will you end up as the highest paid player? In you have the to league? ask Pat. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 I'm hoping we'll, we'll get it done pretty soon and 
Colorado's the only place I want to be. Uh, that's for sure. So, um, love Joe and C Mac. Those guys are great. It's just, you know, a little business, but sorry to not to answer your question, but I'm not going to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm but, not going to answer you. But what you're saying to me is there's nothing to worry about here. Like this is on the path to getting done. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I mean, myself, Pat, the team, we all have good intentions. There's no bad blood or anything. It's just, it's been a longer process than I thought, I guess. Um, my head, it's like, oh, first day I'm eligible, it'll be done, you know, but <laughs> things don't work like that, I guess. Um, but it's okay. I think uh, it should be done shortly, I'm hoping. Um, that's my goal. If not, I guess feeling good. So whatever happens, happens. Okay, let's lighten it up. Was Sidney Crosby the drunkest person at your Stanley <laughs> Cup party? Uh, no, but he, he had a good time, though, so... <laughs> I'll put him in the top 10. <laughs> you can tell us who wore the lampshade? Uh, Gabe Gabe fell asleep at my at my party. So. Did he wake up with writing on his face? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. We took it easy on him. <laughs> uh, at, at, at what point, because listen, like, what a marvelous season, Stanley Cup. Like, and th- that Stanley Cup final was great, by the way. That was a, from our perch. That's yeah, a great cup final a great to watch, final. man. That was so much fun. Um, at what point this summer did you say, okay, that was then, and then we have another season coming up? Hmm. not yet i don't think <laughs> like i'm i'm hungry for more but yeah i just think you know you text the boys or talk to them now we see them in denver like you know we've all watched the final game like three or four times mm. like start to finish and just the build up to it like if they lose this game they go back for game seven then i like seeing like the behind the scenes stuff you see what john cooper's saying about us and how we're getting tight and it's just awesome I just lo- I just love to see that, and I love Coop. I love I played for him at Worlds. Like I, yep. I think oh, yeah. he's a amazing guy, amazing coach. But it's just fun to see him say those things. You're just like uh, like come on, Coop. We weren't that tight, but he was right. <laughs> he honestly was right. Was he yeah. game five? He was right. Yeah, he was saying these guys are tight, and he could feel it and see it. And yeah, he was right. We were tight. So yeah. was there anything else when you went back and you watched that really stood out to you? Well, yeah, like the one. I think like the the one thing was like we didn't really say much in when the cameras were in the in the room. Um they they come in at like nine on the clock and we would just kinda all shut up then, you know. We didn't wanna like I don't know. It's just kinda phony, just gonna stand up in front of the room when the camera comes in and give a mot- motivational speech. Like, yeah. None of us really like that. So people were wondering, like, oh, like the mood looked bad in the room, like in game six, I remember some I did a podcast back home called high button yeah give him a little shout yeah, out absolutely yep. yeah um so i did a podcast with them in halifax and he was like oh like you know the mood looked really bad and you know down one nothing you had an ice bag on your neck and but i was just like no we felt amazing like we knew we were going to win that game like we liked playing from behind that whole series and i think we had 10 com- comeback wins um we just felt looser down we just kind of played aggressive and fr- freer it was it was weird um when we got up, we got a little tight and tried to preserve the lead versus attack and, and be aggressive and uh, play our game. So we enjoyed being down in game six. We were down one nothing. I think like the first shift of the game. Uh, but yeah, we were good. So Sometimes there's, um, there's a moment in the series where a, a team can feel, okay, we've got them. Now we know we have them. Did you ever feel that way against Tampa? No, no. They're... they're a weird team to play. Um, they played like a one, three, one in the, or one, three, yeah. One, three, one in the neutral zone, like kind of tight. Mm-hmm. And they let you have possession with the puck, but they block everything. Like their, their D are so big. And then you have Vasilevsky in the net when you do get one through. Uh, so it's just a hard, and they don't go away. I think the, they're such a resilient group and mm-hmm. maybe we underestimated that a little bit going into game three. Um, you know, beat them seven nothing in game two, and we we're just feeling it. You know, we're like, oh yeah, like here we go. And then we lost six two. <laughs> so <laughs> then you get, you know, then you're like, oh god, this could be two two really quickly if we don't win game four. And yeah, um, yeah, the Nas comes back, obviously scores that OT winner. Yeah, uh, that was a special moment, I think, in in hockey history, in mm-hmm. my opinion. Um, you know, he's got his half his thumb is still cracked and displaced, and he comes back and makes a great move and the offside thing. And it was, 
like you said, it was a fun series. I think, uh, you know, we, we try to just stay locked into it and, and not get caught up in the media stuff, but you could definitely tell there was a buzz around the. the Let series. me ask you about the, the, uh, the offside thing. Was it an offside thing or an onside thing? Like when did, <laughs> what did, what did happen? What did you think? Well, I was the guy on the ice. Yeah, I know. And I remember I was just so tired when I was changing and I knew we were doing a quick up. And for some reason, I could have just went left and jumped over the boards. But the bench was like a little bit offside, like the door. Yeah. Like yeah. in San Jose. In San Jose when yeah. Gabe went offside. Yes. So I didn't want to change. I just stood there. And I was just thinking I can't go offside. Uh, <laughs> Nas did jump a little early. <laughs> uh, but... Yeah, it's the. I guess it's the not our fault. We didn't get called, and I'm sure they'd take that goal too. So, what was the best text or call you got after you won? Like in the aftermath, there's always people who who reach out to you out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. Like, was there one you said, "Wow, like that's"? I think Peyton Manning came to our little cup celebration in Denver, uh, which was amazing. Uh, that was really cool. Uh, Wayne, Are you Gre- go on the Manning cast. Uh, no, I, I hope they invite me. You should. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, Wayne Gretzky, he, he texts me quite a bit actually during the playoffs, which mm. was pretty cool. Um, that was fun. Uh, does he give you see. tips or anything like that? Or what does he do? He just compliments me. <laughs> I'm just like, thanks Wayne. <laughs> like Mr. Gretzky, you know, <laughs> it's crazy. Like you see Wayne Gretzky pop up on your phone. I'm like, well, oh, is that, re- is that actually real? You know, uh, he's such a nice person. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd say those two, I, I don't, there was so many, you know, it's like, remember I sat down, I had like anxiety not answering people, you know? And mm-hmm. so I sat down one day, it took me a couple hours and I answered everybody. So. How many messages was it? I, I, I had a few hundred, I think. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think Eric Johnson had a couple thousand. I'm like, dude, you know, way too wow. many people. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta stop giving out your number. But <laughs> um, Jared Bednar, your head coach. I mean, uh, a winner at every level. I, I have a lot of time. Um, for someone that spent as much time both as you know a player and as a coach in the ECHL yeah. and was probably given a lot of reasons and opportunities to quit and never took it. Um, really, I was happy for a lot of people on you. I was happy for you, like, happy for a lot of people yeah. within the Avs. Um, and he becomes you know one of the most decorated coaches uh, of all time at various hockey levels, ECHL, AHL, uh, and now NHL. What was he like during the playoffs? What was he like during the Tampa series? He was great. Um, Bedsy's a really chill guy, yeah. uh, which is good for my relationship, I think, as with a coach. Um, I'm not so chill sometimes, and he's super relaxed. We've and, heard. <laughs> yeah. So I'll get all fired up, and he's like, it's okay. You know, he's just like, he's like a surfer guy, you know. He's just like, it's okay. But he'll, he does get really fiery, too, like when he has to, which which I think is great. He doesn't come in every day, like, the same he picks his spots and he reads the room and um he has such a good relationship with the players and stuff and uh and it's always been like that it wasn't just because we won now it's like looser like he's just the same all the time which is which is nice from a coach like you don't want your coach being different every day or not saying hi to you in the hallways and guys are guys getting their head about that so um but yeah like you said i mean he 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 grinded like he was in, was playing in the coast and won as a coach yeah. in the A. Like he's earned everything he's gotten. It wasn't like he played for twenty years in the NHL and just got a job. Like mm-hmm. no, it's like really, twenty years in the coast, player coach. Like yeah, it, I think those are the best coaches. You know, even Cooper, he didn't play. I don't know. It's just when you just love coaching, it's all you want to do your whole yeah. life. I think it's uh, those are the best ones. I know you watch a lot of news and stuff to see what's going on out there on your road to repeating this year was there one move that happened in the summer that you said that's going to be interesting in terms of our goal to repeat another team made or even you guys made well the obvious one is calgary Nas going to calgary he texted our group chat uh He's like, I don't give any deals on the ice. Like, <laughs> that was like the end of the text, though. It was like, love you guys, whatever, all that stuff. He's like, I don't give any deals. And then he left the chat, <laughs> which was pretty so fitting for Nas. stick up the nose this <laughs> year. Oh, yeah, yeah. probably, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's fine. I think that'll be a tough one. But I, I think even our divisions is, is a grind with, yep. with Mini, St. Louis, uh, Nashville, uh, Winnipeg, I think. Everyone kind of has a... Dallas. Dallas, sorry. Dallas. Um so yeah, it's, it's a grind. Like it's a it's heavy hockey. It's um obviously and then 
the Pacific is really good too. So I think the West is stronger than it it was last year in general. So I guess you don't want to. I'm good. I, the, the, I guess the last thing I want to ask is we joked about Crosby before. Obviously, you guys have an incredible relationship. Now you guys are. I know you wouldn't like the term equals, but you've both won. And I wondered when you guys skated together and you guys talked together this off season, did it change at all? Because you now both have the same feeling of that great win. I just think we can like talk about it more. I think it's kind of awkward to talk about it with someone who hasn't won. You don't want to like feel like you're, you know, bragging or anything. And I I think that's how he is. He didn't want to like, but I think just comparing the similarities between team culture, you know, you know, what kind of recipe you have to have to win, like how the mood is and everything. So um, it's cool to talk to him about that now, for sure. I get to kind of pick his brain a little bit more, but yeah, you're on this sacred thing forever now. And um, that's what's so cool, seeing all these names that you're affiliated with. Uh, that was, I think that's the most special thing. Um, all the best players ever on that on that trophy. And, and now we get to be on it too. So it's pretty cool. Well, Jeff, Nathan smiled 78 times during this interview with yeah. breaks his previous record by, I think, 78. <laughs> yeah, so exactly. congratulations, well Nathan, all your success. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.